Hey everyone, this is S.M. Pratt, and today we're going to do a yearly recap video, not only for where Pokemon's at right now, but where I think it'll be going into 2023. This last year in 2022 was a ride. It was a little volatile. We had crazy inflation, stock market all over the place, a lot of things happened. We've had better times in this past year. Yet, throughout all that, Pokemon, in my opinion, has not only remained consistent, it's been strong yet calm. I think that's my overall thesis here for where Pokemon is at right now. It's strong but calm. Not as crazy FOMO as a couple years ago, you know, when Logan Paul hit the scene, all these new things were happening in 2020. But that demand overall has still remained in the Pokemon world. You know, it's still here. It might have just pivoted from WotC and followed the Yellow Border Road down to the EX era and Diamond and Pearl because both of those categories are higher from a couple years ago or might have gone into Japanese promos like the LP Shuckle that I shouted out in Patreon that hit over $1,000. There's just so many examples right now of not only consistent interest, but also some emerging interest, which we'll get into within the overall Pokemon market. And I think a good way for people who are still a little bit cynical about that is to really compare it to other collectibles and what's going on. Just compare it to pretty much everything else. And we're going to do that. We're going to talk about every other category and show how it really doesn't have much overlap in relation to what's going on in the Pokemon world. Starting with things like crypto. Who? A crypto? Is that still happening? Or even crazier, NFTs. Who? Like, who are NFTs? I remember when I made a video like four or five years ago when everyone was telling me that crypto is going to change the world. And anytime you use the word crypto in your video title, you get botted with all these spam accounts trying to tell you it's going to change everything. And here we are today and the price is lower than it was four to five years ago. So we're still waiting for that revolution, yet it hasn't happened in 2022. And NFTs, I think the market volume trading dropped 99%. So there's still a chance. 1% is still a chance that it'll do all the amazing things everyone said it would. But the bottom line is, is wherever you stand on all that, it doesn't really have much correlation to Pokemon. There might be these hairline, you know, cross sections for certain cards or whatever, but ultimately it's negligible. It really doesn't have much of a effect, especially direct effect on what's going on in the Pokemon market. Another one is something like video games. We had the crazy run up of these highly speculative, you know, graded S, -pop, S tier popular games like Mario 64, Zelda, even some Pokemon titles. And I remember when that was going on, my first thought was, well, grading's very new for video games. It's a very early days, so naturally the pop's going to be low and there might be more of them. And here we are a few years later. And of course, it's cooled off pretty significantly. Not bottomed out, you know, like the verticals that they are, the whatever cringe like term is being used in the Web3 world that's always being shoved down your throat like NFTs and crypto. That stuff reverse stonk bottomed out, but it didn't go that hard. It didn't drop down to Web3 tier. But it's definitely cooled off significantly. And even within that, we'll go deeper into the tangent. You know, things like complete in box, seal. You know, I do a lot of cart collecting as well. That stuff's been pretty consistent. But the point is, is that, you know, this big run up and, and cool off of those, you know, esoteric video game, WADA 9, 8, plus, plus, A, triple X, whatever. That stuff has no real correlation to Pokemon. You know, when it went way up, way down, it still had no real effect. And then getting into magic. If you haven't watched Rudy's videos... <laughs> It's not, at this point, it's not even a video. It's just a constant stream of consciousness of Rudy just fired up about what's going on in Magic. Yeah, it's, it's not fun. It's not a good time right now. 2022 was not good for Magic. They are really just, just burning a lot of rubber over there, reprinting. I mean, not reprinting. Using the same art on a new card. That's not reprinting because reprinting is using the same art on new cards. So this is using the same art on new cards. So it's, it's obviously not reprinting. But that whole fiasco is just not fun. You know, it really put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. Even for me, when I see it as a peripheral magic collector, I'm like, come on now. We we know what's going on. Like, just just give us a nice new set. Like, we don't have to do all this rehash, money grab nonsense. Pokemon has none of that. Didn't affect Pokemon at all. None of that happened with us. And then, you know, the last thing to mention here, or even what some of the things Rudy says in those videos, one more thing about magic, he'll, he'll talk and pump tires of Pokemon, how it's doing everything right. You know, so he is someone who's been around a long time. He's a little bit more vintage than I am. So it's not just a me thing. It's not just, oh, this is my feel for it. There's so many other people that not, they don't even mess with Pokemon heavily that see the benefits of, you know, staying the course and not doing these money grab things or not, you know, getting into the high volatility of like the top sun chars are really the closest thing I think for video games that went up to like half a million and right back down the ground where it belongs with the NFTs. You know, that's that high chase, you know, unexamined, just going in blindly type thing that 
that really isn't a big part of Pokemon. Honestly, Top Sun is more the exception uh, where a lot of these other collectible markets are suffering more than we are with this with this sharp volatility. And you know, the last thing I could compare here is like the stock market. I My collectible everything is better than the stock. I hate looking at my portfolio. I hate it. I hate it. I'm like, I cannot stand stock market. It's it's the statement of it will remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. Just put that 72 font bold size right above your bed next to your Spice Girls poster because that's the truth of the stock market. And it's been a rough ride. There's been a lot of turbulence. But the point is, regardless of where you stand for all these other collectible markets and everything that's going on, not much effect really on the Pokemon side. You know, this doesn't have much correlation to Pokemon. Again, there might be these hairline connections and maybe this one person bottom down has to sell or do whatever, but ultimately that's just absorbed by the overall thesis that is Pokemon is still very strong yet calm. You know, that's just where we are right now. And another thing that's very unique to Pokemon specifically is China. China started, if you don't know, China started releasing Pokemon cards. I should probably do a whole separate video on this. And they have really just entered the market in a wave. You know, if you had to categorize, a, if there was a big rush of something in 2022, I would definitely say Chinese buyers. And that's because they started to release modern product over there. And I would say at this point, my last few auction blocks, probably at least 10% of my buyers were from China or and or Hong Kong. So therefore, this is something, again, that's unique to Pokemon that you're really not seeing in other markets. I doubt because they started releasing new Pokemon products in China that that's going to correlate to more Magic buyers. That's going to correlate to more video game buyers or, or any other collectible. I think it's definitely a, a Pokemon privilege. So just trying to paint the full picture here and show you not only is there really little no overlap with all the volatility from all these other collectibles, but also we do have these nice things going on like not only China releasing cards and other areas as well, but China is the big one. You know, at the end of the day, I always say this about China, 1 billion people, 1% of that is 10 million. That's a lot of interest. You know, even what we're, we're talking practice. We're talking 1%. So 1% of a billion, it's just a numbers game. 10 million is a lot. While there have been other language releases as well, which probably have some, you know, some effect, added effect on the market. China is definitely the, the most noticeable. So the bottom line is here is that I think Pokemon has proven yet again how the market is driven by this very personal thing. I've always said this ever since I sat down in this chair, that Pokemon is driven by a personal interest and engagement. Sure, you have the, the speculation of these guys back here, the Rip Flip Dippers, the Scumbag Prats, or the big investors, or whatever it is. You have all that, right? Just like every other market does. But the core of Pokemon has proven yet again why it stays the course during this turbulence is because most people are doing this because they simply just enjoy it. It's not because it's necessarily playable. It's not even because it's necessarily trendy. I remember I had to come out of the closet 15 years ago and tell people, hey guys, I like Pokemon cards. So it's not one thing outside of being a personal interest. That's the number one thing I could think of. You know, even to this day with all the money, all the craziness, all the celebrities or whatever else is going on, every time I look at these cards, I have the same feeling and same reaction I did when I, when I was a kid from day one, from 1999 until today. When I see a Shadowless card, I still freak out. To this day, if I buy a collection from someone, I'm flipping through the pages, there's like a Shadowless Machop or something, I'm on it. You know, I get the same rush as I did when I was a kid. And I think that's why Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise. They have tapped into some fundamental human thing that not only is limited to our experience and our generation, it's very cyclical and it can broaden to people who didn't even grow up with it. You know, the whole Pokemon Go arm of Pokemon. There's no comp to that in anything else. You know, I, I always hear the cynical world of Reddit and the internet that just cynic, being cynical on the internet is like the, it's a dime a dozen. And I remember seeing like, yeah, Pokemon Go is nothing now, no one plays it. I'm like, what's the more successful mobile game? You know, what's the magic comp to that? You know, what's what's the comp to that? What, what game gets people ages 50 and above, AARP members interested in Pokemon? You know, there's just something truly like magical and unique about what Pokemon delivers at the end of the day. And the final thing I'll say here is, I just don't see an indicator in the short term that's going to have this type of drop like NFT did or crypto or, you know, whatever the, the bubble that bursts within the context of the WADA crazy speculative, you know, Mario games, wherever that is. I don't see an indicator for something like that. Now, does that imply that everything's just going to go up? No, absolutely not. But because of what I just said earlier, that I think Pokemon is mainly driven by that organic interest of people who just want this stuff. You know, my biggest struggle talked about on Patreon, you know, I've had some 
fantastic offers, maybe even some life-changing offers on a lot of the big cards I have. The biggest struggle is the emotion. You know, the finances are already there. They're just waiting to, for a yes. You know, they're waiting to be acknowledged. But it's the emotion that's the thing that's really tough, you know, to make that pivot. So I think that's the core here, why Pokemon is so successful. And I think my overall takeaway here is that out of everything that I collect, I worry the least about Pokemon. You know, it's not that I think it's going to continue to rocket fuel or I'm suggesting that it's going to explode and make you millions of dollars. It's just I don't see it as being volatile as everything else, especially in this very tumultuous time. Pokemon has remained strong yet calm. I think that's where it is right now, you know, going into the end of 2022 and probably early 2023. And these are the reasons for why I believe that is. So there is my recap video uh, for Pokemon in 2022. Let me know how you feel. Hopefully I summarized it well, but as usual, you know the deal. Let me know how I feel. Till next time, guys.